bit different, namely because I was browsing on my Tumblr and I found out that July 29th, 2014 was the very first time I'd ever shared anything kind of on Tumblr. I know I'd shared in some capacity in like Plump Up Keep, potentially on The Sims, but like I was really mu very much a lurker. And I was aware of Tumblr at that point, but I didn't have one. And then I ended up getting one and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna share the neighborhood that I had at the time, which was Oddly Island, and it's kind of just continued on. <laughs> so yeah, I'm basically building the fort that serves as the home base for my Pathfinder group while we're doing this. And you know, there's, there's gonna be a lot of me mentally mathing. But anyways, this is a, so much about the build as kind of just me being so shocked and surprised because I very much am one of those people that I lack discipline. <laughs> it's very difficult for me to keep a regimented routine unless somebody else kind of built it for me. Like having a job that requires me to be there. Like it's kind of hard. And then once I'm in the routine, it's great. But like getting the routine and keeping the routine, and I know a lot of people struggle with the same thing, is difficult. So the fact that I've kept this active and continued on with it, I know I'm coming up, I think, on three years on YouTube. Like, I'm proud of that. And it seems like a small thing, but for somebody who is so la-di-da, you know, who knows where my head is, basically, it's, it's, it's a good thing, and I want to celebrate. Although it is, I will admit, making me miss Oddly Island quite a bit. That basically started out as, it's, like, it's called like an orphanage challenge, where you basically had the game using the tombstone of life and death and generate a bunch of sims for you and i think it was three of each no there was more it was i think it was like three female three male sims of each age and then only three infants but then you had the option of like every monday you could generate a new random infant you had two adults and you basically just had to raise the children it's like very very proto 100 babies challenge except your sims weren't having the babies <laughs> And it was kind of hard, and I remember playing it, and then I finally beat it, and then I just kept playing it, because I really got attached to The Sims. And yeah, I did build a whole world. Oddly Island probably went through three or four renditions before its last one. I've tried to build it in Sims 4, and I just wasn't satisfied. This was years ago, too, so Sims 4 was not as advanced as it is now, and I really just wasn't happy or satisfied with where it was. And then, of course, at the time, Updates were a lot worse, it felt like things broke. I mean, they still break, but it just it felt so disorganized and everything would break and then I'd be frustrated because I had like custom treats and things like that. So I just kind of gave up on it. And now of course I'm missing it again. So I kind of want to do like a return to Oddly Island, but I don't know. I don't like having too many modern neighborhoods just because it's not my jam. To the point where I actually deleted my modern save folder a couple years ago and had to rebuild it. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. We all we all do that to ourselves. We're like, no, I'm not gonna use this. Delete. Oh, I really could use that. And then Adirin, I actually had to look it up. So the first Kingdom of Adirin post I made was November 30th, 2014. And by that point I had great grandparents in the game. Aging has definitely slowed quite a bit since I started using Hats Mod and also sharing and really tracking things before. It was a Royal Kingdom challenge that I just kind of played through. Started off with everything you typically do and the families were a little bit different, but it's been so long some of those sims I don't even remember or have images of. And since then it has developed into basically a story that I'm still sharing today. It's just a lot slower. <laughs> Usually takes me about a year to do a round. I'm hoping that after round three it'll be quicker because what happened last time is I had a goal and so about a quarter of the way playing through in order to meet my goal I stopped filling out my excel spreadsheet, making profiles, doing the things that I wanted to do because I was more focused on just finishing that round. So this time I'm going slow. I still have a goal of finishing Round three, I don't think it's gonna happen though, and rather than punish myself, I'm just gonna take it slow and focus on getting the things done that need to be done so that in the future, it doesn't take forever because I'm not creating profiles, taking specific screenshots, 
decorating, doing all those things, like, it'll hopefully be a little bit better. I've also implemented some things to help me, so like, sometimes I just don't want to decorate. And so there's many houses in Adirin that are basically bare bones empty. So I kind of implemented, also I was trying this trick that someone said worked, if you put the fence there and then delete it, it'll keep the pillar, it doesn't do it in my game, I don't know why. So yeah, one of the things I've implemented in Deeran is I'm going to, each time I play a household, if it's not a decorated house, well, I need to buy one item per sim for their space. It doesn't have to necessarily be for their bedroom, but just one item per sim. So for example, I could decorate a whole living room and that would count because it's gonna be a bunch of items, but just like using the number of sims in the household to determine how many things I buy. And I think that's gonna help me force me to decorate, but also like not in a way that I'm going to resent. I must say I am kind of impressed with this build. I didn't know if I could do it, because also I don't have updated pictures of the map that we use, but because we, we play in person, so I was just trying to remember. But there's like, there's a moat around, obviously I built this really close to the lot border so the moat's not full. But there's a full moat, the wood part is meant to be a drawbridge. I have like I know I could do an actual drawbridge, but I was being lazy. And yeah. I decorate a tiny bit here, but like not really, because that, that wasn't my focus. Uh, if you guys like this build, I definitely can continue filming. I, I feel like I'm getting a little bit back to my roots of like Doll, where I was literally just building and decorating and it was just slow vibes, no challenges or anything. And I kind of want to do a little bit more of that. Okay, so this room that we're building here is kind of like their office meeting room because they're a guild of adventurers. People show up to petition to basically, hey, I would like to hire you to do X, Y, or Z. And so this space is really that. Um, there's a big table in the middle, like a round table with chairs all around it. There's a fireplace in the corner with benches. And then there's stairs that go upstairs to like our library, but there's also like a loft. So I didn't want like a giant fireplace, but I didn't want one. And then it had two sets of stairs. There's also um, like a secret, secret escape room for like safety, which you can get to from this room, but obviously Sims. If it was Sims 4, I could do like a basement situation, but like Sims 2 is not not as kind with the tools that it gives you automatically. You have to use lots of build sheets and I'm not here for that. I don't want to. <laughs> the thing about me, I don't like build sheets. I don't think they're bad. I just, I don't like using them because I feel like the more build sheets that you use, the more likely that your Sims are gonna have issues somewhere, whether it's with routing, whether it's with clipping, it just personally is not worth it to me. So I just, I don't want to do it. See, so yeah, I do kind of decorate the library area just because I was trying to see if I, could like sneak a window in, but it didn't make sense. And there's been lots of debates in my group about what they, cause we basically get points to add to our base as we go. It was like a ruined fort and we've slowly been building it up. So we, there's lots of healthy debating about what we want to do and what's important. I don't know, I have a lot of fun doing it. I'm glad, like, I'm glad that I have a group to play with first of all, but I could never play Pathfinder, but just in general, it's a pretty solid group. I'm enjoying Pathfinder. I didn't know if I would. Years ago someone told me I should play it and I bought like the books that are now outdated but I just never, it's hard to find gaming groups, especially consistent ones, so I just never got around to it. Hey, okay, I got one now. Except both my RPG game group people, like both of them get together on the same day, so it's Tuesday, so my Tuesdays are just role-playing. That's all we're doing. I kind of want to get another group together though, I've been thinking about it of like, specifically a women's group because I'm part of a women's gathering group thing basically, hey, we would like to make friends, we just moved to this itinerant city, do you need friends kind of thing? And like a lot of the people like to hike or like do things really early or go out and like, because I live in Las Vegas, so there's lots of like shows and venues and things and that's cool, but I'm like, there's also people in that group like me who are like, oh, I can't do any of those things, I'm sorry. So, but I think they could do tabletop, and then I could corrupt them. Okay, so this here is a barn. Um, on our map, it's like four stalls, but like, I already knew that that was gonna look really 
sad for the horses. I'm like, I'm just gonna do two. It'll be fine. Which we don't even have mounts of any kind. This, this is just more for people who visit. Also, I'm so upset that my stone does not match my fence, but I, I was not changing the fencing for the whole place, so I was just like, whatever, I'll pick one that's close. Another thing that we do in this kind of Pathfinder group is like we get underling points so we can like hire people. And I actually ended up quote unquote adopting a small child who probably had a family, but she is my grandchild of dubious origin. And she, we're just kind of raising her like a feral animal. She's like 11. And I'm just like, no, we're gonna teach her how to throw knives and <laughs> she's gonna be something. <laughs> so it's great. I just imagine her climbing the walls. Guards. Uh, we just got a character called Minnie, who is like 13 from a wizarding school that kind of shut down, and she is going to help make us potions and things. Which, that's this that I built does need a wizard's tower. Uh, I don't see where I got until just now, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> he was like, oh yeah, Minnie, and I'm like, ah, cool. Because Minnie's tower is where the stable is, so like, I don't know. Again, if this was Sims 4, I could correct that easily, but Sims 2 says, oh, you want to change something? I will punish you! Uh, this is like our main living quarters, those three are rooms. That bigger area is meant to be like a clinic. Because at one point we had a cleric who wanted to heal people. There are rooms in these upper floors, but I genuinely couldn't remember the layouts, so I was just like, meh. They're just meant to be bedrooms for us and for the staff kind of thing. This little area in the corner is a kitchen and the little attached thing next to it is meant to be like a blacksmith's shed because obviously the blacksmith's probably gonna be working outdoors for most of it and I do have blacksmith CC to put on the outside but like I didn't want to do too much in the terms of decorating. This was building. I'm mad about Minnie's tower. I forgot about her. We just got her. We literally just got her two days ago. At the time of my building this. Okay, so over here is, we have like a big farm for growing food. We also have like, we just call it the ranch, but we just have a couple of cows. We also have a garden. So like, I, I didn't have space for it. The ranch is supposed to be behind the fort, but again, I, the way I had to lay it out, like it had to be like this. So it's on the side. It doesn't matter. And then I was mad that the barn didn't work with that. And I'm like, forget it. It doesn't matter. We're not barn experts. We just have cows. So yeah. I'm curious if anybody else has like looked up their simming anniversary or like you save it because I never have before. And I was just like, huh, it's coming up all. Which means I've had a deer in for much. I always keep saying 10 years. I must have had a deer in then for like closer to 13 or 14 years. A deer in is getting to the point where it could drive. <laughs> like, I, yeah, that's, that's stressful. I decided that this area is normally open, but because I couldn't put the garden in, I decided to just put a little garden here. There's also gonna be a kitchen garden and then a little lavender garden because my character who is an 80 year old druid who she just decided to go on adventuring. She realized, oh, not everybody can do these things. This is just a me thing. And she wanted an adventure. She lived her life. She raised the kids. Like she's, she's doing her own thing now. But she accidentally started a mass marketing scheme. So she creates Mother Maddox's monster spray, essentially. Like it's very silly, but it's because we have to do this thing where we advertise so that our payments are higher and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And her monster spray was a rousing success. Sometimes she drops trees on people and it doesn't work. Although sometimes it does. See, I wanted her to have plenty of lavender. I've actually made little bottles of monster spray in real life just because it's cute. There's decorative, obviously, but yeah. And then I know this is like really dense, but like we have a druid in the group. She could maintain this. As long as she chose to maintain it. Moira could always choose not to. But I think she'd maintain it. I really wanted to use the sunflowers, but like they just weren't going with the color scheme that I had selected. So I love these teeny tiny flowers too. I want to 
actually really happy with this build. I kind of want to chuck it in a deer end. It serves no purpose, but I don't care because, like, I definitely couldn't put our characters in a deer end because there's like a knoll. It's like basically a bloodbender, and yeah, like, it just wouldn't work. But maybe I could do an adventuring guild because I know I have Sims that want to adventure, so I could include that in some way in a deer end. Now that we have like 10 be revealed. I don't know. I'm curious if any of you guys have used the Sims to like rebuild, or not even rebuild, to just build things that are part of like tabletop game or just other things in general. I know people use it for like, I've seen people use it for real houses and all kinds of stuff. So I'm like, yeah, probably. I realized I didn't have windows, and I was like, oh, oh, windows are kind of important. I really wanted to use this everywhere, but we had a long discussion about windows, so I didn't. I just put them, I realize I have the short ones, but I put some to the office, because like you need line of sight, and I put a tiny little wooden window in the stable, again, line of sight. Our little area has been attacked before, so important that you could see. I couldn't put any windows in the library because I couldn't. But I put them on the second floor up. Or no, I use, I do on the front floor too. There, and I actually, I do like an open hole because the Knoll Barbarian, I just thought it would be a funny, because first of all, the spacing wasn't working for a window in his room, but like he needed a window. So I thought it'd be funny if it looked like a patched hole where he had broken through it at some point and we just had to patch it. And then he wanted to leave it because he was excited that he made a window. So that's what that is on the on the first floor. Listen, you gotta take your entertainment where you can. And I was trying to find the double window, and of course things were being pink soup. And I remembered I don't actually have a double a double of that one. I've got this, which functions as a double, so that's why I always think that I have a double. I just kept misclicking crazy. I had the worst migraine earlier, and I took medication for it. And I was like, mm. Besides the windows. I don't know, do you think that I should add an adventurer's guild to a deer in? I definitely, there are many sims that would potentially work for that now that I'm thinking about it. I need to figure out what to do with Princess Solo, though, because she's gonna be coming back and like, recently I rolled, because her Isidore, who is the heir, and he's the only male Blumenthal directly from the king, and definitely rolled to have a substance pro problem, which in my game is opium or bubble blowing. I'll have to figure out which exactly one. And he also is like super gay. So I'm like, um, the heir to the kingdom is a problem. But like Salome, before he was born, like she was kind of raised to be the heir apparent. So like, am I going to have a house of the dragons moment where she, I don't know. I don't know. I've got to figure it out though. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. As always, I hope you like the video. Please give it a like, and I'll see you in the next one.